Okay, we are ready to begin. If you would, raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. We have a question right here to the right. Coach, I apologize. I lost my voice. But um, can you talk about a little bit your, your expectations for this coming season and, and what you want to see out of the team? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, I probably should have said right when I came up, just appreciate you guys being here. appreciate uh, everything the SEC has done to put this together. It's been fun to see uh, the other coaches and players, and it's hard to believe it's this time of the year already for sure. But in regards to expectations, we want to build from last year. Obviously, we weren't satisfied. Uh, felt like we were just right there on the cusp of getting into the NCAA tournament. And, um, you know, we didn't control what we needed to control, and that was probably win one more game. And so uh, it's fueled our fire our, all summer long. Uh, our players have worked extremely hard, and I'm really excited about um, that locker room. That culture piece has always been huge for us. Uh, the girls have had a great off season, and they got a couple weeks in August to be able to go home and then come back at the end of the month, and they picked up right where they left off. Um, really feel blessed. we got a great group of scout guys uh, that we battle against every day, and I think they're making us a, a little bit more tougher and, and more accountable, and um, so that's, that's really good. I think anytime you go against bigger, faster, stronger, uh, that ele elevates you for sure. So our returning players obviously coming back with uh, quite a bit of experience experience and um, I just think the maturity the leadership is is exactly what we need to have out of them right now excited about our young kids we've got two freshmen that have already elevated our program on the court and in that locker room and then we've got a pretty special transfer Caitlin Gilbert who's coming in from Notre Dame uh, has had some injuries and whatnot but a pretty special player that uh, I think has a chance to really really elevate us as well up front Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, the commissioner this morning cited Missouri a couple of times about over your upset over South Carolina and why we need to increase the March Madness tournament. Can you talk about your thoughts on the potential increasing of postseason tournaments? Well, that's why he gets the big bucks. He gets to address those. You know, he probably thinks about issues and, and challenges uh, more than we do as coaches. But it is crazy uh, and awesome to see how much the game has grown. Um, you know, I think you've got players that start at a much younger age in the development and, and just the growth of the game as a whole. You look at some of those teams that are left out of March Madness, and it's really unfortunate. You know, there's so many uh, great moments and, in, in, um, you know, fairy tale stories uh, within the NCAA tournament. So, um, you know, I think it would be great if we could expand it. I think there's enough teams that you wouldn't lose the quality of the tournament. Uh, and uh, I think it only elevates it as a whole. Right here up front. Hi, Coach. Uh, AP Stedham, WHEP. Coach, with the transfer portal, has that changed your philosophy? Some coaches may be shifting away to pursuing transfer uh, players instead of the high school level. You know, um, maybe it's geared toward that end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it's it's changed the game quite a bit, and I think as a coach, you always got to try to stay one step ahead of it um, because you never know from year to year what those rosters are going to look like. I think you know there's value in both. Um, yeah, I think when you recruit a, a high school kid, uh, I know for me personally, the hopes are that they're going to be in our program for four years, and you're going to have a chance to develop them. And you know there's going to be a sense of pride in representing your program. Um, I think when you take a transfer portal uh, player. Um, just the experience, you know, that they've had. They've already been there. They've done that. They've played on the big stage under the bright lights. I think the biggest challenge is just the speed of the game. Um, you know, I think uh, time management uh, for those high school kids coming into college can be really challenging. And so there's there's pros and cons probably both ways in regards to, to which direction you go with your recruits. But uh, for me personally, uh, we're probably going to continue to do a little bit of both. I think there's great value and both the high school player and great value and, and just seeing what's available in that portal and if it fits your program. Back here to the right. 
Um, Coach, can you tell us a little bit about the newcomers on your team and, and kind of the impact you're expecting from them? Yeah, would love to. Thank you. Um, so first, Ashton Judd. Uh, she's a young lady from uh, the state of Missouri. Um, has won at a very high level. Uh, versatile player, which is really important for us in our system because of uh, the way that we play. Uh, has the ability to probably play the two, three, or four. She's got good size. Really impressed with the strength that she's come in. A lot of times when you have uh, freshmen coming in, uh, it just takes a while to get caught up in the weight room, but she brings great size, really good athleticism, uh, can knock down shots, which obviously we like that a lot. Um, you know, I think there's the biggest learning curve for her has been on the defensive end, uh, but just a worker, um, high, high uh, motor, um, competes at a really high level in everything she does. And uh, both her and Avery, our other freshmen, have absolutely impacted our program already. Avery Kroenke is a kid that's a local kid from Rockbridge who uh, we saw play quite a bit. We knew we were getting a kid that had a high motor, but I just love she, she talks nonstop. Um, she is a fierce competitor as well, uh, defends really well, has great speed. We've got great speed at that point guard position with Mama, uh, but to have somebody that can come in and, and continue to uh, play at that pace defensively, also the ability to get a piece of the paint, transfer the advantage, that was huge for us. And then Caitlin Gilbert, she's our transfer from uh, Notre Dame and uh, has been in and out of, of games uh, with injuries and whatnot, so our biggest challenge is to keep her healthy and and watch that training load but what an incredible young lady uh, just mature beyond her years uh, has an extremely high basketball IQ uh, has the ability to probably play one through four uh, in our system um, plays with great pace and uh, has really I think from a leadership standpoint she's not a, a super outgoing but when she speaks people listen because they have so much respect for her game so she's going to be somebody that we're going to be counting on heavily this year as well. Haley had mentioned um, you know working really hard to build chemistry with the newcomers how do y'all go about that what goes into um, bringing the new people along? Yeah you know I think um, for our returning players, they understand what that needs to look like, and, and not because it's forced, but because you truly care. And you know, when you look in that locker room, and um, it, when it's when it's coach led, it's always going to be pretty surfacey. But when it's player led, I think that's when you go when you have the opportunity to go to that next level. And uh, our returning players, they've been a part of uh, those years when Sophie played for us, and they understand what that needs to look like, and that's why they came to Mizzou. And so the intentionality. Um, the time commitment um, that you've got to put in to build those relationships so you build that chemistry on the court is really, really important. And so, you know, just grabbing lunch, grabbing dinner, um, you know, going down to the lake as a team. Um, you know, just this last weekend had an opportunity to go to Fear Fest uh, with Halloween coming up. But just those extracurricular activities, it can't be uh, for two and a half hours on the court, and that's the only time you spend together, at least not in our program. Uh, that culture is really important. And so sometimes it's just uh, putting your arm around one of those new players or underclassmen and just say, hey, I've been there before, you know, and it's going to be okay. It, uh, dealing with homesickness, whatever it looks like. But we do a lot as a team off the court, and I think that continues to build that chemistry on the court. Any more questions? Okay, thank All you, right. Coach. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming out and covering the SEC. Thank you.